Well, isn't there something very satisfying about putting in some little retainers, uh, those little um, those little tin things with the rubber around them that hold the brake lines in place? I just thought, you know what, these things are flopping around here. They are exposed to the weather um, by virtue of salt and things coming up through the bottom. It just made sense to um, drill some holes, pop rivet in place, and put a little paint in there to fill in the holes. So. This was actually a very satisfying little thing to do. I did in the front and the back. The last brake line to do is this one that goes from the front to the back. Um, the, the factory, the way they ran it from the factory, it went through that with those two little grommets and they kind of did this little chicane around the side and I just thought I'd straighten up the lines, flatten them out a bit more and then have them run down the side where the seats go. Um, I did put a union in there just to keep it nice and tight. Uh, it's a big floppy fish if you don't. So there you go, there's my union. Look at that. You know, there's something really satisfying about brake lines. It's got little screws and all the other bits and pieces that come together. And it's, uh, yeah, it's quite rewarding when you do a really good brake line. I know now, because I've done about 10. I still have two to go, by the way, for the back. And if you're wondering why the brake lines have a little bit of extra play in them and they have that little wow or a little curve in them, it's just basically to make up, uh, I have to use up some of the extra length. You wanna have them too long rather than too short. So here's Bill and myself putting the transmission in the uh, back of the car. Uh, actually fit in really, uh, really well. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly um, difficult to fit in with the new, the new mounts for it, but they're urethane rather than rubber. Um, so a little bit of messing around to get them all to, to fit into place, but eventually it came into place. And of course now we have all the extra torque with the, with the uh, torsion rods in, in place. And we're just tightening up the last couple of bolts here to hold the whole thing to the car. There truly is something really quite rewarding about putting brand new clean parts on a, an old 60 year old chassis. So here we are putting the shocks on. Uh, and then what we do is we put the Kafer uh, cup bar on, which is a truss rod assembly that connects both the uh, towers on the back of the car and it attaches them to transmission. It's designed to prevent wheel hop and tie in the whole back of the car. Um, we, we didn't know about this actually until we spoke with the fellow that we're getting the motor from, that this is kind of an important part. So what I'm doing here is where the rear mounts are, uh, they don't quite fit properly. So again, part of this whole thing when you're modifying a car for performance is you gotta do a little bit of grinding and cutting and welding and that. So we're just cutting out a little bit of the metal here to make those parts, as you can see there, uh, fit properly. That took a few little, uh, few little times to make it work, right? Eventually it all came together. Just doing a little fine tuning here to put the uh, rear mounts on for that bar. Um, again, the heim joints all have to be adjusted and, and massaged a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit of a balance thing. You take some off of one side, you add it to the other. It's, it's a lot of farting around, but it's a very rigid thing when it's all put back together at the end of the day. Yeah, we're doing brakes. We are doing brakes. So here we're just putting the uh, bearing chases in, all the uh, rotors, uh, all the rotors, all both of the rotors. Um, they went in without event, so we got those things ready to go. And um, I have to say, I love these, these uh, MP rotors. They look really cool. And uh, as you'll see towards the end of the video, we uh, bolted the wheels up and it's, it's a real nice backdrop. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, it's like high school, grade 12, uh, doing a break job with Mr. Filipov. Again, I pay homage to the great Mr. Filipov. Um, hope he's still with us. Uh, just throwing these things back on there again. It's your standard break thing. You throw some grease in there. Uh, the one thing with the Volkswagen is they have the, uh, they have the reverse threaded little uh, nuts that fit on there with an Ellen head. What I do here is I, I torque everything down. I don't do it tonight though, or in this video I should say, um, just because I don't know if they have to come off again. Everything is kind of in flux right now. So I put them on and yes, I know I'm using a hammer again. I said I wouldn't, but this washer has a couple little things on it. What I've noticed is all the empty stuff is really nice. It looks good. It's just a thousandth of an inch off in a lot of areas. So. That's where that, when they ask you about the German parts, the European parts, the MP parts, what I would take from this, uh, from this experience is to always get the German part. They just fit right out of the box. You stick them on and they all work. It's, it's just the way it is. And the extra expense is actually worth it. So with these uh, brake calipers, um, they're they're basically mass-produced things that go on you know 60 years worth of cars. They're all the same part really. What they've done is they give you some shims, and I'm sure at some point in this in this image I I point to the shims. But what happens is you have to align the center of the caliper with the center of the disc, and you need even amount of room on both sides. And I think I'm probably pointing to it, or I will, or here I go. Look at me go zing don't get sick um, so what you want to do is make sure you have enough space on one side as you do on the other and there I go right there that's it so you use these little shims and that aligns everything up uh, it's a little bit of farting around it's not the easiest and most there you go look at that it's like almost like I can do this was happening so yeah those go on everything's awesome a little bit of tightening a little bit of fast forwarding and then I get to use my torque wrench, which I haven't brought out yet. The, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's a DeWalt. I don't know if I buy one again, but it's, uh, it's yellow, which is nice. And we torque these things to 29 foot-pounds. Again, I'm not sure why 30 wasn't good enough uh, and 28 wasn't good enough, but 29 is, is where they want it. So click and we hit 29 foot-pounds. the same with any other caliper you have to just undo one of the bolts and then the whole thing kind of opens up and uh, what you'll notice there is I'm actually moving the wrong one when I go to the right one look at that it's almost like it was designed to be undone and have the discs put in discs no pads uh, so yeah we basically open this guy up and throw the pads in they flop right into place and it's a pretty easy swap Okay, the back of this car was that little episode you're seeing right now with this wrench, that 
represents probably 35 minutes. I had to actually walk away from this break for about 10 minutes. I actually went and got a beer. It was two in the afternoon, so it wasn't like I have a problem uh, with problem drinking while I'm working on Volkswagens. It was a Pilsner, uh, but it was an absolute monster. Whoever invented this, it, stop. Like, go find another job. You're terrible at designing parking brakes. Just, God. Anyways, there's me without a ball cap. That's the first time you'll see it, probably the last. Anyways, what I had to do here, uh, these brakes don't fit properly. Again, with that whole my little notion about uh, parts being German and parts fitting, and there, there's something to it. I had to grind a little bit away um, because the new parts are actually too wide. So when you go to put the uh, drum over top of the shoes, they don't quite fit. They're just a little bit too wide by about uh, like. 65 foul like it's not tons but it's enough for you you simply can't put the uh the drum on so i had to take them off and go grind a little bit of metal away so that way the drums would be smaller uh, in, in in that compartment there uh, and better fit the drums then i put them on otherwise what was happening is they were so tight that you had no play in them and then the brakes would be on as soon as you put them uh, as soon as you move the car, the brakes are actually on, you get overheating and scoring and everything else. It, it would just be a, um, a terrible outcome. And I'm happy to report everything went together as planned. Uh, the brake drums uh, went on without incident and everything went together and the brake drums work. So thanks for tuning in everyone. Uh, stay tuned for the next couple of minutes. So I'll do my debrief for the whole episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys, to episode number 13. Uh, this has been an absolutely ridiculous day uh, or a couple days of working on stuff. Um, we've got the brake lines finished up here. You'll see them in there. There's a, a union we put in. And uh, that was the last of all those brake lines. Thank God. It was, God, it was awful doing those things. Anyways, uh, that's all done. We have the wheels and tires on and mounted. Uh, originally, I was kind of a red wheel guy with white wall, thinking that would be kind of a cool look. Uh, Bill was uh, hard and fast about having the gray wheels. And you know what I got to say? It's like that Toyota Tacoma gray look they have right now, that, that really cool kind of muted, non-metallic look. Um, I don't know, you tell me. I think those look absolutely bloody excellent. So I think he made a really good call on that one there. Um, we got the truss rod in here. There's a name for this thing and it has a name. It starts with a K. I can't think of what it's called right now. This uh, entire assembly here is really important for preventing wheel hop and things. It basically ties the whole back end together. Um, if this was a Camaro or something, it would be called a traction bar, I guess, whatever. It prevents wheel hop and it gives the back end some rigidity. So it, uh, it's gonna play a large role in um, and things moving forward here but um yeah no this having this transmission back in and having nearly everything done is pretty cool uh we are almost at rolling chassis i have one more full day of steering to do and then i've got a couple little little surprises coming up uh to support the new engine um got some braided fuel line here so that has to be run down the down the uh, channel, down the center. But uh, other than that, we are good to roll this thing on the ground and we have a rolling chassis. The engine, it's my hope that we'll get it within a week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, and throw that bad boy in here and now we got ourselves uh, a completed chassis and now we're on to straight body work at that point. We are, I think, three months into this thing right now. It started uh, around... Oh, I'm going to say March, no, February 17th, February, March, April, May. Um, it's been an absolute crazy adventure in getting stuff done. We are absolutely ticking boxes every single time we, we open the door to the garage. So uh, thank you to all the people who have, have um, offered their opinion on things and, and some support. And to all the people who have logged in, commented, liked, um, and subscribed it really does make a difference so this is uh this is where we're at so yeah it's getting close guys all right we'll see you for 14.
Thank <laughs> you.